Hi, this is Veronica Menes, New Concepts and Travel. And this is the first of a travel web series I'll be doing, and I am focusing on Bhutan. Bhutan. I went there last November, it was my second time there, and I fell in love with this landlocked country all over again. It's pristine mountains, fresh air, and barley conscious government. All it makes it seem like a type of utopia. This government is, this country rather, is surrounded by China and India. And the first king came to power in 1907. Well, since then, there's been a lot of changes um, for the better. It still retains its original flavor, its culture, but it's opened it up to tourists. In the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, you had to be invited by the king. Now, the great, great, great grandson of the first king is now opening up to tourists, which is a wonderful thing. Now we can all experience this, this wonderful country and, and culture. I'm glad it's opening up in any of it. There are different districts in Bhutan, and I think two of my favorite would be Timpu and Punaka. Now, in each district, there is this uh, for, there's a structure called a zong, and what it is, it's like a big fortress that protects the districts. In the center, there's this big open courtyard where you have the dances or you have community affairs, and I was lucky enough to be there when they had a festival, and oh, wow, was that something to see. I mean, they had the dancing and the different costumes and the people and the food and they all embraced me and they took me into their, their temples and they, you know, it was, it was just an amazing experience that I would hope that I could share with you or that you will go and see yourself. It is just fantastic. And I think the height of the whole trip there was going up to Tiger's Nest. Now this is, this is a temple that's built on the side of a mountain. I don't know how they built this on the side of a mountain, but it is absolutely amazing. But it's a hike. It's not for the weary. It took me three hours to walk up there. I can't even explain in enough words, but I want you to take a journey through my photos and hopefully this will show you what I am seeing in my mind that I'm trying to get to you. So let's take this journey through my photos and we'll take it from there. Bhutan, its constitution mandates that 60% of the land must be forest, which accounts for the beautiful countryside and ensures no overdevelopment. On the flight from Nepal to Bhutan, you can get a wonderful view of the Himalayas and Mount Everest when sitting on the left side of the plane. It is a beautiful sight to see, especially on a clear day. A town that I visit is Punaka, but the distance from Punaka from Timpu is approximately three hours. It is quite a pleasant drive, as the landscape is lush with trees. The mountains are dotted with homes and prayer flags abound. On the way, I stop at the Jachula Pass and see 108 stupas standing as a memorial to the Bhutanese soldiers. The morning is foggy and the stupas are shrouded in a cape of mist. In the background, the Himalayas. The pass is located at an elevation of 10,200 feet. Onward to the Panaka Zong. A Zong is a distinct type of fortress architecture found mainly in Bhutan and Tibet. The architecture is massive in style, with towering exterior walls surrounding a complex of courtyards. It is divided into two parts, half to religious functions, primarily the temple and the monks' accommodations, and the other government administrative offices. The Panaka Zong is quite exquisite. This is referred to as the Palace of Great Happiness and Bliss. <laughs> Next is my visit to the Trongsa Zong. The drive is approximately five hours from Punaka. Along the drive, I see yaks, monkeys, and beautiful birds. I arrive at night, and my hotel, the Yank Hill, offers wonderful views of the Trongsa Zong lit at night. The following day after breakfast, I walk through the small town of Trongsa, past a lively marketplace with women bargaining their wares. Again, I am amazed at the construction underway, streets being paved and widened from my last visit. I am fascinated at the stories and legends I am told visiting each Zong district. The Bhutanese people are deeply re religious and each temple has its own unique story of their creation. 
Bumtang is the next district on the journey and literally translates to beautiful field. This area is considered the most historic consisting of four mountain valleys. The number of ancient temples is imposing. Each temple entrance is surrounded by prayer wheels, which reminds me of the deeply held beliefs of the people here. Tiger's Nest, a prominent Halayan Buddhist sacred site is certainly the highlight and always taken at the end of one's trip. A very clever thing to do as you get accustomed to the altitude during your stay and the hike is not as arduous. The monastery is located 6.2 miles north of Paro Valley and hangs on a precarious cliff at 10,240 10, feet, about 3,000 feet above Paro Valley. The rock slopes are very steep and the monastery is built into the rock face. The path leads through a pine forest and colorful prayer flags abound. The views are spectacular as you ascend the mountain. Once you reach the top of the monastery, stuns. It is absolutely striking and definitely unforgettable. Overall, my trip to Bhutan was one of my best experiences. The trip, I stayed a little over two weeks, was outstanding and quite memorable. The people, the beauty, and the landscape and their customs will stay with me forever. I hope you enjoyed this journey with me through my photos and my explanations of Bhutan because it's quite an experience. Well, there's a couple of things I have to tell you about Bhutan. The weather is mostly like the climate on the east coast of the United States. So they have their winters and they have their summers and it does get a little chilly during their winters. Make sure you pack accordingly. It's very relaxed. There's no dressing up. Um, just just remember that you'll be hiking and um, just visiting with nature. So be relaxed. You'll also, if you're a U.S. citizen, you'll also need a visa. Now, they, there's no independent travel in Bhutan. You definitely need a guide. You cannot go there on your own. The company I use in Bhutan is Make My Holidays, and the owner's name is Nima, and he is terrific. He'll do everything from soup to nuts. Once you've paid for your vacation in Bhutan, they will issue your visa, and he takes care of everything, and he's just the nicest man you'll ever want to meet. I hope you do this cute piques your curiosity that you'll want to visit Bhutan because like I said it was my second time there and I'm going again in 2018. I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time I'm going to surprise you on where we're going and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. Veronica Menace, New Concepts of Travel. Until next time, bye.